we are moving into an interesting subject and this is on coalition politics. Uh, I, I just I mentioned that this is an interesting aspect in the Indian political history and uh, this uh, we, we, we have to go back to the first election scenario and we are making a comprehensive study on everything. This is a comprehensive study. Since you are going for the group on mains, it is uh, a necessary part, necessary aspect to know the fact in an analytical manner. So I am going into the deep rooted historical subject that the first election held, organized heavily in the ending of 1951 and at the initial time of 1952. At the time Sukumar Sen was the chief election commissioner, it was a big process. And uh, according to Ramachandra Guhas, the India after Gandhi, uh, it was an interesting chapter. It was there in that book. In that big process, only uh, one party was there from south to north and east to west. That party is Indian National Congress. No other alternative was there existed at that time. Only Indian National Congress. So many parties were there with their name, but not the adequate popularity that the Indian National Congress getting. Those parties are Socialist Party and United Communist Party and of course Republican Party of India and one or two regional parties like Jharkhand Mukti Morcha. It was there at that time also. And uh, at that time Jansang also emerged. Jansang. It was there. The, the old uh, name of uh, today's Bharatiya Janta Party. No party got double digit. It was the situation at that time and Congress emerged the last, largest party having more than 370 seats out of 520. Jawaharlal Nehru was the tallest leader at that time. Nobody challenged his leadership. So it went off well. And uh, after that, up to 1962, unchallenged, unparalleled leader was Jawaharlal Nehru. The China war took place. It was China's aggressive mood, backstabbing mentality of the China. Nehru, he depressed a lot and he thought that his uh, the preaching on peace and everything destroyed by the China's negative diplomacy and aggressiveness. And uh, people challenged his leadership. In particular, opposition leaders like Rahman or Lohia challenged him. It was a fact that uh, the leader, lead, leadership was weakened by several uh, circumstances. In particular, uh, the losing the war with China in the year 1962. Okay, it was over and uh, Nehru took his last breath in the year 1969 May, perhaps on 20th, I think. And thereafter, Lal Bahadur Shastri became the Prime Minister. And the Congress party's popularity and its strength in both houses of parliament intact. No other party challenged the Congress party. Lagbar Shastri's regime went off for 18 months and he gasped his last breath at Tashkent in the year 1966. Then came another Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, daughter of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. At that time, you know, you have to you have to remember, you have to identify that that. Mrs. Gandhi was not in a key position 
in the Lal Bahadur Shastri's government. She was I and V Minister, Information and Broadcast. And this portfolio is not that like a finance or uh, defense or home or commerce. She was a minister, but a cabinet minister, not a Lok Sabha member. She was representing the Rajya Sabha from UP to Rajya Sabha from UP. Of course, in the year 1966, Indira Gandhi became the third prime minister. It was uh, in the historical books, uh, Kuldeep Nair and others wrote that it was the master plan of the kingmaker Kamraj Nadar. However, history is there. It is in fact the crystal clear that she ruled this country for more than 15 years. Okay. This is another, uh, another chapter, another matter. Now, let me enter into the the central focusing factor that the coalition government when it actually started in India and uh, I can tell you that in the year 1967 general election took place for the Lok Sabha at that time the unchallengeable and unparalleled Congress party, its strength became very lesser when comparing it with the 1962 Lok Sabha elections. It got just 260 plus seats in the strength of 520. Then started the coalition thought. Uh, and uh, People rejected the Congress party. That was the statement of opposition party leaders. But it was not actually rejection. But the projection that, that we too have our parallel alternative opportunities to vote. Not uh, um, voting collectively to the Congress party. We are also vote. We may also vote for another party. Which is, which is promising to give a very good life for us. This was the people's opinion. And at that time, some one, 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 one interesting phenomenon happened. In the year 1967, some UP-like key states went for its assembly elections. You know, UP was the key factor. Uh, in the Indian politics since yesterday. You know, in the Nehru's once, in the cabinet of Nehru, uh, it was told that more than 80% ministers in the cabinet were from UP. And UP having 85 seats in the Lok Sabha was, is the biggest and mightiest state in Indian political scenario. So, this uh, <coughs> This, uh, in the 1967 assembly elections for UP, MP and other states in Punjab and uh, of course in West Bengal, one interesting thing happened that Congress not even achieved an absolute majority uh, of majority in any of these states. So then emerged other parties. For UP, you know, uh, one party was Bharatiya Kisan Dal or Kranti Dal and Bharatiya Jan Sangh and other parties and one or two communist parties. All these parties emerged into one unit. It was, it became a front and the leader of this front became chief minister of that state. But not having absolute majority by his party. But one or two or three parties became friends and uh, they created a front and they put the alternative to the Congress party and they met the governor and uh, governor permitted them to take oath. Then they became chief ministers. No ideology, no principles, nothing. Only power. And the second thing is that not to not 
to give an opportunity for Congress party to take power. It was happened in 1967 assembly elections. You know, the prime minister who never visited the parliament house, it was a record. That prime minister was Charan Singh. Chaudhary Charan Singh. He became the UP chief minister at that time. And uh, uh, some uh, uh, DP Mishra, the Chanakya of Madhya Pradesh politics, became Madhya Pradesh CM. And in West Bengal, uh, some other parties, one or two parties, including Jansang and Communist, became coalition partners. And uh, they established their own this uh, regime. And in Punjab also. Akalidal was there. And uh, with BJS and other parties, they took the power. This was the 1967. It was the pioneering a turning point in the history of coalition politics in India. Then what happened, you know, these governments collapsed nearer or before or just after 1967-69. Because not having any, any continuing policies and ethics and principles, they started quarreling with each other for the power sharing and more powers. And it was an imbalanced administration. So, these governments collapsed by their own uh, mistakes. And otherwise, the T56 article was imposed upon them. You know, this was uh, the very biggest powerful article uh, while dealing with the states at that time by the center. This was the failure story of the initial level of the coalition political parties, coalition governments, not coalition political parties, it was the governments. And this, uh, this happened. The second thing that the another history came in the year 1977 March. You know, uh, emergency was imposed on our country by the Indira Gandhi government in the year 1975, May. This was imposed by the then Indira Gandhi government. And uh, several um, uh, crit uh, critical cr criticisms are there on, uh, on uh, emergency and uh, few more appreciations are also there. Because of the emergency that uh, India emerged as a secured nation and uh, without emergency, it was uh, very much dangerous to even imagine the India's future. It was uh, the um, version of the positive thinkers who are support who supported the emergency. But many more voices are there that it was uh, the dictatorial attitude of the rulers and it was uh, a nightmare experience for those people who are residing in North India. Uh, the negative or negative commentators on emergency telling from that day to even today also. Even today also they are remembering the nightmare experiences of the emergency days those happened in UP and Bihar and other states of North India. However, it was it is not the matter. In the year 1977, the emergency was lifted in the month January. Then came Lok Sabha elections. Indira Gandhi was the Prime Minister. And uh, public opinion was so negative upon her government. Because of corruption, dictatorial attitude, par par policy paralysis and not uh, getting the adequate uh, range of growth at economic level. And then came the Lok Nayak. He was Jay Prakash Narayan. He was an elderly statesman. He was very close to Nehru. And he thought he was a socialist. He was a Sarvodaya leader. He was a true Gandhian and a freedom fighter. And he advised all those fragmented 
political parties in the opposition to unite except communists to make a fight against Indira Gandhi's regime at that time. Otherwise, he advised that you can't emerge. This is the right time to unite yourselves. Then, by his preachings, I just I mentioned now that he was an elderly man in that uh, Indian political scenario. They came over and they accepted to uh, to 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 de-idealize themselves. They they adopted only one ideology that they must make a united fight uh, to <clears throat> dethrone the then government and uh, then uh, the, the the achieving the power at the right time and giving a very good administration to the people of India who suffered a lot by the emergency and other factors. So then BJS, as I told you, BJS Bharati Janson, it was led by Advani and Vajpayee. They are towering personalities of this party. And uh, Babu Jagjivan Ram, he was a great leader. He was minister, cabinet minister for more than four decades. He was a freedom fighter. And uh, he, he quit the Congress party before uh, the Lok Sabha elections. So he established his own Congress, uh, his own group. It was Congress for Democracy, CDF, CFD. And uh, this Charan Singh party and other socialist groups all came together on one dais and it became one party. Its name is Janata Party. With one symbol, with one ideology, with one, with one, with one motto, this uh, strongest leaders like Moraji Deshai, Hemoti Nandan Bahuguna, Lal Krishna Advani, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, and uh, H.M. Patel, Charan Singh, and all these leaders came onto one dais and they fought unitedly to win the election in 1977. And the Janata Party, in a, it was a miracle in Indian political history that it got the absolute majority by getting 285 seats. And they formed the government under the leadership of Moraji Deshai. He was a stalwart at that time and he was an eminent political leader and a statesman. And he even led the United Mumbai state which was uh, now bifurcated as Gujarat and Maharashtra in the year 1960. He was chief minister before that, that uh, United Mumbai state it was called at that time. And uh, he was uh, finance minister for, uh, he submitted more than 10 budgets at that time in the center. So he became the prime minister. This is of course not technically not a coalition government. But at the quality level, at the qualitative level, it was a coalition government. This was the first experiment. And what happened? It was a failure story, not a successful story. Because of Charan Singh, his dream project was to become the Prime Minister of India. What the hell? At that moment, he was co-minister. And uh, his experience in the past is confined to his own state that was UP and even confined to his own area that was western UP. Agriculturally progressive area. And uh, his dream was to become Prime Minister of India. So, this gentleman started his own politics within existing in the cabinet. It is a wrong thing. It is unethical. Not resigning from the government, existing in the cabinet and making destabilization politics. It is a, it is a wrong thing. But he, he, he indulged that. And then Moraji Deshwai resigned his prime minister post in the 1979 July. 
and this Charan Singh started his own group that is what the Lok Dal with 100 ad members. George Fernand and others joined in that group. Yes, it happened. Then President of India Neelam Sanjeev Reddy invited this Charan Singh to form the government. Congress came onto the dais and they told that, that not joining in the government, we are going to support Mr. Charan Singh and his local party. So, political leaders and people and even uh, the president of that time, a senior statesman, Sanjeev Redigaru, also everyone thought that, that this government will be stabilized by the external support given by the Congress party. It was also a coalition government. But before uh, taking the vote of confidence, before its initial performance only, this uh, party, Congress party, withdrawn its support to the Charan Singh government. What went wrong, we don't know. It was a, it's, it was its inner political strategy. Then, this Charan Singh government collapsed. Okay? This was another failure story of the coalition government. One, Moraji Deshai. Second was Charan Singh. Then, you know, People also never supported these type of coalition governments because the financial growth will be reduced and the political, uh, what we call it, political stabilization and uh, the security strengthening, all things, all things must be mentioned, all things, all things must be discussed a lot because of the uh, the the security and the internal security and external security and also financial development. These are all uh, important important uh, what we call it uh, concerns uh, from from a small citizen to a mightiest intellectual, isn't it? They all hated and they all rejected these kind of uh, coalition politics. Then in the year 1980, midterm elections came. In those elections. Indira Gandhi's Congress party became a triumphant political wing by getting 380 seats. And then coalition politics went into the into a back seat. Unparalleled and unchallengeable party, Congress, it formed the government. Okay? And uh, the sad, uh, the tragic thing took place in the year 1984, October 31st. A great Prime Minister, a great determined decision maker, Srimati Indira Gandhi Garu, assassinated by her uh, own guards. It was a tragic incident. It was a very, very much tragic that a Prime Minister like Indira Gandhi got uh, this kind of uh, this tragic ending okay then uh, <clears throat> came 1984 lok sabha elections the sympathy wave emerged like anything it was a tsunami oh, oh indira gandhi garu she was a great leader she was assassinated by her own guards oh, this type of sympathy it was like a tsunami then, in that uh, sympathetic wave, Congress party got 411 seats, which was not achieved even in the period of Nehru. Then, Raju Gandhi became Prime Minister in the year 1984. He was Prime Minister for five years. It was a, a stabilized government because they got 411 seats for the Lok Sabha. You know, at that time, Bharati Janta Party got only two seats. And Janta Party got three seats. And another party, Lok Dal, got some 11 or 12 seats are not, not less than that. It was the story at that time. Mm -hmm.